theory, performance, rhythm, rhythm, rhythm harmony, line and form, line and form, line and form acoustics, form, notation, orchestration, tan, neurology, and perception. These are the keys to understanding music. Hello, and welcome to Understanding Music. So far, we've looked at the concept of a note and how it is represented by a little oval shape. And that we take these shapes and we put them on lines or spaces in a five line system we call a staff. And depending on how or high or low these symbols are, they re represent the different notes. If we put a clef at the beginning of this system, then that defines these lines and spaces as specific notes. And the bottom line is the note E, and the next space is F, and so on. We've also looked at how the shape of the note has to do with its duration. If it's just the head, the oval shape, then it is worth, under normal circumstances, four beats. If we put a stem on it, that turns it into two beats. And, and the durations of the different notes come out of something called the geometric sequence, which is if we start number one and we go in one direction, it doubles. One, two, four, eight, sixteen, thirty-two, and so forth. If we go in the opposite direction, it halves. One becomes a half, and then a quarter, and then an eighth, and a sixteenth, and a thirty-second, and so on. And so these different notes and their durations fits into this geometric sequence. So yet the whole note is worth four, and then the half note is worth two, the quarter note is worth one, and then successive amount of tails on the shorter notes. The eighth note is worth half a beat, the sixteenth note is worth a quarter of a beat, the thirty-second note is worth an eighth of a beat. For many instances, that's as small as you have to go, but it does go on infinitely. And in the fifteenth century, this was a great boon, but eventually they realized it was still limiting. What happens if you want a note of three beats? One, four, or two and a half. Da, ba, da, 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 for that very simple rhythm. They didn't have a symbol for that. So eventually they came up with two more concepts, which are called the dot and the tie, and that's what we're going to look at today. The dot probably came first, but I'm going to talk about the tie first because it's a simpler concept. A tie is a simple shape. It's a little curved line that starts on one note and attaches to another note as long as they are of the same pitch. Now, technically, the curved line should start at around the 2 o'clock or 1.30, if the note was a clock position, going to the same position on the opposite side. However, most modern software has it going from the very top to the top of the next note. That's not actually accurate, but people are getting used to it, and I see a lot of people, even professionals, are doing that now. But technically, that's where we place a slur, not a tie. A tie is supposed to be slightly more in. And as long as the two notes are of the same pitch, what this little line does is it adds the two notes together. The beginning of the slur is where the off of the first note should happen. And at the beginning of the next note, there should be an attack. So if you had a note that was a you know, half note followed by a quarter note in the same, of the same pitch, it would be ba, ba. But if you use this slur, you add the, them together, and so that negates the off of the first note and the on of the second note, and you play it as if it's one long sound. Da. And you can tie any amount of notes you need to. In film soundtracks, frequently you'll hear like string notes creeping up on a single note, and they just hold that note for a while while something else happens. If you look at the actual score or the part of the violin, it's a whole note tied to 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 a whole note, because they're just holding this one sound for a very long time. And so, we can use ties to come up with any combination of rhythms that we need. Now, what a dot is, is a small symbol that's placed to the uh, right of the note. It's placed in the middle of the space if the note is in the space. And if the note is on a line, we still put it in the middle of the space, usually the space above. Because if you put a dot, which is a couple times thicker than the line, up to some people like huge dots, which would take up maybe a quarter of the space. 
if you put it right on the line then it's hard to see at a distance and especially these days if you're photocopying or recopying out they're easily missed so we put them in the middle of space what a dot does it makes the note longer in the most simplest way and how does it do this it goes into that geometric sequence and it adds a half a dot adds a half of whatever it comes after so if you have a whole note and you put a dot after it whole notes usually worth four beats now with that dot and what we call this whole thing is a dotted whole note now that's worth six beats and each one of the notes can have a dot so the progression four beats two beats one beat a half a beat a quarter of a beat if all those notes have dots it's now six beats three beats one and a half beats three quarters of a beat three eighths of a beat Now, the reason I specifically said it adds half of whatever comes after is that you can use multiple dots. If you want, let's say, a note that's three and a half beats. Ba, 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 ba. We could take a half note and we could tie it to a quarter note and we could tie it to an eighth note. And that would give us one sound that was three and a half beats in length. But we could also use dots. And dots are simpler to read once you know how they work and they take up less paper. So you could take a half note and put a dot after it. That adds half of the half note and that makes this sound, a dotted half note, three beats in length. If I add another dot, it adds half the value of whatever it comes after, which was a dot worth one beat. So that second dot is worth a half a beat. So two plus one and a half, that is one sound, which is three and a half beats in length. Now, why would we do that instead of tying? Because after a while, you memorize all these different rhythms, and then you don't have to do math in your head as you're playing. You just know what that symbol is. And they fit into another sequence. If you take a look at all the notes that have dots and double dots and triple dots, they fall into certain patterns. So a couple of basics about using dots and ties. Rests do not need to use ties because there's no on and off to negate. So only notes use ties and rests don't. And even though you can use dots on rests, in general, they aren't. There are a few exceptions. The dotted eighth rest, uh, followed by a sixteenth note. You see that a lot. But in general, rests do not use dots because that's yet one more distinction between notes and rests. The major distinction is although there are different shapes of rests, they're always written in the same place, whereas notes have different shapes and they, they go up and down all over the place depending on what the pitches are. And the other distinction is that on top of notes we will put all sorts of extra marks, dots, ties, accent marks, articulations, dynamics, all sorts of little markings go on notes and we don't do that for rest. They're simply don't play for this long, don't play for this long. One of the handy things of using ties is allowing you to use notes that are longer than your basic count. For example, if you're in a march, your count is one, two, one, two, and if you want a note that's one, na, 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 you got a note that's three beats in length. Now, you might think you could use a dot on the half note, but the half note is the longest note you can have in 2-4. So it allows you to tie that half note into the next bar, and then you can have a note of three beats. If you want a note of five beats, then you tie one half note to the next half note into the third bar, and, and that would work. And like we saw in film scores, sometimes you just want to hold one note for a very long time so you can tie one note for as many bars as necessary. So, we now have a scenario where we have different shaped notes and rests, and in general we don't use more than about six of them, from the whole note down to about the 32nd note. And in combination with dots and ties, we can now write almost any duration you need to. Now the next big thing we want to do is look at using these different 
shapes of notes and rests and put them into rhythmic and musical phrases and see how they fit into larger structures which on the most basic level we call time and feel and pulse. So until then, stay safe and I'll see you soon.